Hello everybody, that is here. Today's subject of a review is the Alpha Cool Nexus Radiators. And while the Nexus name was on the market for the longest time, a lot of people having them for years, it's only recently as Alpha Cool decided to create a crossflow version. Crossflow radiators was kind of taboo for a while. Even myself was um, getting information from forums, people saying you lose a lot of performance, things like this. And to my own surprise, when I tested cross-flow types of radiators last year, I found out that there's no real difference, to be honest. And um, you're welcome to watch my video about that. I put a, a link into the description. So if you want to look at test results and make your own opinion, feel free to do so. But back to radiators and cross flow configuration i think the probably alpha cool also was just going with the flow assuming that cross flow is big no go and they never bothered to make one but as some new information pop up and also new type of cases starting for very next uh, last year so cross flow configuration actually makes a lot of sense because it allows you to reduce the tube clutter Sometimes you have to run tubing all the way across your case and it not always look visually pleasing. With cross flow configuration, you can enter on one side of the case and exit on other side of the case. So like coming from the, let's say, GPU block on one side and coming to your reservoir on the front of the case, as example. So that makes total sense for many people Popularity of such cases as the P5 from Thermotake make it even more appealing. If you follow my channel, you saw my customer build uh, Skynet and you saw that uh, I basically utilize cross flow data at full of its potential to make really nice tube runs, at least in my opinion. When I exited from the pump and reservoir combo in the very bottom of the P5 case and just water goes across the entire quad radiator and exited towards the CPU. So I didn't need to run the longest tube from the top to the bottom, which would be totally ugly and waste of materials as well. So cross flow, is getting more and more popular. I see more and more customers buy them. So it's make total sense that now we have a old and trusted Nexus family available in cross flow configuration. There's a three, well, we spoke about the fact that they exist for 140 millimeter, 120 millimeter. So in that direction, we covered it. But also I would like to say that there is a certain sizes of radiator itself. So we have like a single core radiator or we have a dual core radiator or we have, let's say triple core radiator. So there is a three sizes basically, no, four sizes because we have also quad. So this is four sizes of radiators available and there is also different thickness. So we have a, like ST30, which is the thinnest one. Uh, XT45, which is middle size, and we have uh, UT60, which is the thickest version of the same radiator. So you can see there's a, quite a variety of those things. But now, if you decide to, let's say, fans define the size of like your radiator in this sense, but after that, you need to decide which version you get, and I would like to touch a little bit on the differences between them. So let's start with the thinnest one, ST30. So it's 140 millimeter version of it. So the radiator is slim. It works obviously when you don't need uh, extreme performance uh, and uh, you have a lightly overclocked system because the bigger radiator essentially, the more performance you get out of it because uh, the performance radiator for the most of it boils towards the total surface of all fins. So the, the bigger, wider and Secret radiator is you get additional performance. We already discussed that the longer the longer radiator is give you bigger kick, but nevertheless the width and thickness adds to it to a certain degree. So if you have a system with a physical constraints and uh, you don't need a crazy performance or like bigger performance or a secret radiator, that's the model for you. There's a one big difference between ST30 and all other radiators. That's the number of ports in it. One of the signature features of Nexus radiators is they give you abundance of the ports. Many radiators, like the low end ones, in order to 
make radiator less cost less and production usually comes like with two ports on one side at the end of the story and sometimes they give you a little bit more they give you extra ports on other side which is have a dual port situation nexus specifically give you most radiators five ports but not for xt30 so you have a ports on both sides so you can throw you this side and this side you have a ports covered but there's no port on this side so if you talk about any other model xt45 you can see the, there's a one here and ut60 you have one extra port so keep in mind when you're selecting st30 if that port for whatever reason is must have same that maybe this radiator is not for you another difference between those three sizes is uh, the all of them have a slightly different density of the fins so again back to st30 I don't have exact numbers, but uh, looking at it, I would say that this is about FPI 17, 15 range. So you can see the fins a little bit more dense. So while radiator is not as big, they actually give you a little bit additional performance kick in terms of having more dense fins and radiator itself. Of course, this will be a little bit less suitable for slow fans because more restriction comes through. But nevertheless, what we have here is a uh, fin density is the highest on ST30. Moving to XT45, fin density increased just a little bit. It's not very big difference, but nevertheless, it's a little bit less restrictive in this sense. And going towards UT60, this is almost as old style radiators, which has a huge like low density fins, like even seven or nine. Per inch. This one looks like about 10-ish, I would say 10-11, that's what I'm, how I see it from, from just visual inspection. So as you can see, the, the bigger radiator, the lower fins density it comes. So for those who would like to follow rules to the last dot of it, and if you're looking for lower speed fans, that the secret radiators will be kind of uh, more suitable for lower speed fans, and while the ST30, might be work better with a mid speed or faster spinning fans for you so there's another thing that i like to cover that what kind of accessory coming with those those radiators alpha cool is actually pretty generous they give you not one but two size of screws so you have a 30 millimeter screw that typically works well when you touch fan 20 standard 25 millimeter fan on the radiator and they use a 30 millimeter screw but 35 millimeter screw will be useful when you also have a panel thickness added between let's say radiator and fan so, so this is two parts all always covered in other models of radiators Sometimes you have, most of the time actually, you have one size of the screw, usually 30 millimeter ones, or whatever closes to it, sometimes plus minus millimeter, doesn't matter. But if you would like to mount it through the case side panel, you usually have to outsource screws from some additional cost, basically. But in this case, you have both sizes fully available. Traditionally for European radiators, the threading is M3, which I personally dislike, it's more, easily strippable and damageable than let's say 632 type of the screws that use on majority of other radiators so and also the head that has this uh, hex type of the hole which i also usually dislike i would rather prefer the standard phillips type of the head but this is a uh, just a uh, nitpicking a little bit another thing that i would like to mention that while alpha cool kind of catching up with current trends and now presenting your crossover radiator the one thing they still didn't change the, for those of you who watch who for longest time remember that one of the biggest problems with radiators in the past was the fact that screws was always located just above the water carrying pipe and if you have a too long a screws screw on a, on a radiator you can go too deep and basically just borrow through the pipe and make radiator leak the design didn't change so the pipe is still here the only change that uh, alpha Cold did you have a protective plate right under screw hole so in order to damage the radiator itself you need to borrow through that plate which is not that easy 
I think with a certain de determination, some people probably still can do it, but for 99% of normal users, you just uh, hit the protective panel and after that, it's basically, you can't do much. More, more likely, actually, you will strip the threading on the holes and actually you punch the panel itself. So there's no immediate danger, but it's just a little bit different from many other radiator manufacturers do when they basically move the panel away from the holes and by doing so, they eliminated even any potential uh, way to damage radiator. You can use screw like twice as long as it should be. You just go all the way and cross through the fins, but because they're not water carrying, it's zero danger for, for it, right? So another thing that I'd like to mention that also not typical for all radiators on the market, they give you full coverage with the stop plugs. So while radiators come with a bunch of ports, additional ports, you don't need to worry about stop plugs, all, all stop plugs included. It's black nickel in color. So if something that doesn't bother you, what kind of stop plugs, at least you have ones that available out of the box. If you pursue some sort of specific type of the build, let's say white fittings or whatever, red fittings, of course, you might want to switch to that, but for the standard packaging, you have a fully covered full set of screws, all stop plugs, everything included. So that's all about those radiators. I wanted to bring you up to speed what they are, what they different from each other. I use a couple models in my own builds and my customer builds as well. So they work well. One known feature for Alpha Cool, they usually carry a little bit more flux than other radiators. So they require a little bit more vigorous type of cleaning. But if you take care about the process, you don't need to worry about anything in the long term. That covers a quick overview for Nexus X-Flow radiators from Alpha Cool. Thank you for watching. I will come up with more stuff lying around very shortly. Thank you for your patience. See you soon.